This is the best birthday I've ever had. I just I had enough. I just I broke. I can go this far and no farther. <laughs> Well, welcome to episode 12 of Sharp Knives Rock. Uh, here we are on location in Nathan's backyard. We're gonna play with some fire today, it looks like. Chop mm -hmm. some wood, get a fire going, cook some food, you know? It's what you do when it's June in Calgary. <laughs> yeah, it's a balmy minus eight yeah. today mm -hmm. on this lovely June afternoon. Uh, I am really excited to be all flanneled up and ready to light a fire here. Uh, but I'm mostly excited uh, for you guys to cook for right. me. Right, mm -hmm. right. Today. You know what? When I was living in Japan, I don't think the uh, summer, June, in Canada was like this. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a little chillier than I'd, I'd hoped. Mm. But you know what? I'm liking it. You know, I, I live in Ontario. And I was thinking that it would be warmer than mm -hmm. this in the middle of June. Yeah, so, in the middle of June, right? So, yeah. Well, obviously, <laughs> it's the middle of June. Yes. Obviously. It's Obvious. our birthday month. It Lord is. is. Yeah. 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 I am be a big 37 this year. Me too. Stay tuned, everyone, for awesome giveaways and some announcements to make. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe and just hit the bell button on the bottom to get an old notification about our new videos and such. I'm pretty sure last month I said that we said we wanted a bell, but that didn't happen. So one day we'll get one, mm. maybe next month. Next month, yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Well, the, uh, it's getting chillier, so let's get the fire started, Diff. You got it. Hey guys, I'm going to show you how to make a feather stick today. A feather stick you can make out of any size of wood, from little kindling to kind of more medium kindling to like a full-size log. It doesn't really matter. The name of the game is to start a fire. So we're going to do just that. You want a super sharp knife without any snow on it. And you want to keep your elbow nice and straight while you're pushing through the full length of whatever size kindling you're using. The goal here is to create really thin curls so that you can catch a spark. And when they break off, don't worry about it because that's all still super usable. We're gonna keep all those shavings that came off because anything that comes off is still flammable because the denser they are, the longer they'll burn, which will give you a nice solid time window to get the fire started properly. Just like that. Yeah, you just get that in there. And then, you know, if you drop some little bits while making your feather stick, no problem, because you're going to use them. And then I've got all this tiny kindling that I pop in on top with the shavings. And then typically as that burns down, it'll get some of the bigger kindling that I laid in the bottom there. So this should be roasty toasty in no time. So when you're lighting little stuff, you want to you wanna have loads of it. And then once it's burning through the little stuff kind of faster, like at a stage like this, we're pretty safe to start adding kind of larger kindling. Um, because it'll have enough heat behind it to light the kindling from there. This is what's known as sending it. <laughs> it's obviously much warmer now. Yeah. Yeah. You it know, is. hopefully it doesn't get too warm as it is the middle of June. I could almost take off another flannel, you know? Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Are you on fire here? No, it's nice and uh, nice and toasty now. We can, uh, we can move to the news section. <laughs> What do, you, what do you got, Lori? Yeah, well, Father's Day is uh, has either just happened 
or is going to happen very soon. <laughs> um, and if you're looking for anything, you know, like obviously everyone likes knives, yeah. right? Everyone likes kitchen stuff, uh, likes getting caught on fire. Yep. Um, but if your dad is not much of a kitchen guy, you can always go to Ken of Inglewood. Yep. yep. Right? So if you're in Calgary, you can hit up the store in Inglewood. Yep. Or, um, you know, the Ottawa Knifeware, Vancouver Knifeware, and Edmonton Knifeware mm -hmm. have all the greatest hits. There's yep. always uh, www.kentofinglewood.com. Yep. yep. And, um, you know, razors, yep. like straight razors, safety razors, outdoor stuff like tips, axes, mm -hmm. outdoor knives. Um, what else they got in there? There's all kinds of stuff. Oh, yeah, like colognes. Yeah, and... yeah, yeah. all the grooming stuff. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, um, it's an easy win if you're looking totally. for something because, yeah. you know, if your dad shaves, you can make it better. If he doesn't shave, you can help him out with that. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. He's got like a glorious mustache beard situation. Like, yeah. Lori, you know, yeah. we got all kinds well, of products. Well, I do have to that, carve too. it out, right? Yeah, it's I true. do shave once yeah. a month or so. Nice. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. It's uh, mine and Lori's birthdays. Oh, yeah. yeah. Happy birthday. We have the same birthday. Happy yeah. birthday. Thank you. Which may or may not be today. It may or may not be. Yeah, because it yeah. is It is currently June. Right. It is right June. Now. So it is yeah. a day in June. Happy birthday. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Who do we share our birthday with, Lordy? Uh, Famous Ice people. Cube. Yep. Ice Cube. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, I can't remember anyone else. I didn't know that was on the test. Me neither. Well, since it's nice and toasty in the barbecue weather, yeah. we should talk about the barbecue. Well, yeah. we get whole sorts of barbecue items, right? Especially from Japan. We've had the Komuro grills from Kaginushi. We have lots of different types of the uh, charcoals like Kishubin Chotan and the uh, Ogatan that we, we source out. Yeah. And uh, also the our newest, I guess, addition to that is this Akachan grill. The Akachan means baby in Japanese. So it's like, <laughs> it's a baby grill, but it works such a versatile job. And Here's actually the better thing. We're giving away Akachan Grill. Oh, and really? The, um, wow. The other barbecue uh, accessories. Oh, yeah, like, so what? We've got some skewers, mm. a Tawashi brush for cleanup, chimney starter. So everything you need to get things going. Yep, yep. I might have broke the fire there. Yeah. First. Here is how to enter. First, you have to like and subscribe to the channel and leave the comments below what you like to grill on the Akachan grill. Draw is gonna be happening in next Monday. Well, since we got a fire going, then we're getting actually hungry. We did prepare some uh, meat earlier. Mm -hmm. So yakitori usually comes with the, uh, you know, chicken pieces, some, often it's a thigh. We get yeah. the thigh meat and you dip in this uh, tare. Tare is this uh, dipping sauce while you are grilling. It's like a barbecue sauce. Okay. Right? But the uh, it's a little bit more thinner and okay. uh, sweeter. It doesn't... So the balance for the barbecue sauce is a little bit more towards acid, where Sometimes, the Japanese yeah, yeah, yeah. is more uh, sweet. Okay. So what we're going to do today is to a uh, very simple tare recipe. I have a couple pieces of... Uh, grilled chicken bones that will add the uh, depth and the flavor in the uh, in this thing yeah that's good some okay. chicken bones here um, I usually use Japanese sake uh, today I have the uh, this handmade um, homemade uh, apple cider mm. substitute for that he has a little bit because cider a little bit of acidity and um, alcohol make the uh, tenderize the uh, meat a little bit, mm. right? Did you check to see if that was cider first, or that might have just been vinegar? Nathan's got all kinds of weird shit around here. Well, we'll check the flavor afterwards. Okay. If it's vinegar, we'll, uh, we'll have to just like put more things in it. More sugar. Brown sugar. And ooh, that's a uh, about a half cup probably. <laughs> Okay. And uh, you're gonna do the whole thing, the soy sauce, like? No, no, I will save it for another 
thing, but this is good. And I'll put that on the, over the heat for simmer for probably 20, 30 minutes. Okay. Until it reduces a little bit. Okay. Okay. Alrighty, so that was the recipe. While simmering, I'm making another uh, dipping or marinating um, sauce for okay. a uh, beef. Okay. Well, as for chicken, I'm preparing some uh, beef as well. So, I've got this uh, beautiful short rib. Okay. It's got a really nicely marbled. Yeah. And uh, in North America, people do usually braise them and yeah. cook slow Yeah, it gets long. a little, it gets tough if you yeah. don't do it right. But when it's like, when it's cut nice and thin, this is perfect grilling mm -hmm. uh, over the charcoal kind of I used piece. to, at the restaurant I ran, this was like one of our kind of best-selling mm -hmm. main courses. Mm -hmm. And this is more traditionally Korean. But so you said that yakitori mm -hmm. meant grilled chicken. Mm -hmm. So what would you call this? This we call it yakiniku. Yakiniku. Yaki grill. Okay. Niku, um, general term niku means actually meat. Okay. But in a lot of uh, areas in Japan, niku refers to beef. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's another recipe called yaki buta. Okay. It's, uh, it's actually this this time, yaki becomes a roast. <laughs> the, okay. Uh, roast pork. Roast pork. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, this one here, yaki niku, was traditionally from the Korean uh, Japanese okay. recipe. So we use lots of garlic. Okay. Um, and quite a few sesame oil. Oh, great. Rib. And a short rib, because Japanese people never ate beef before. Um, 1900s. Not really. Oh really? Yeah. Oh okay. That's pretty. I knew it was less common, but I didn't know it was that mm -hmm. like current of an addition. Yeah, it's only yeah. it's about the same uh, same age or the same history as the uh, whole uh, history of Canada. 1867 is that wow. you know the year that Canada became a uh, independent mm -hmm. body. Right. Anyways, so what I'm going to start is the uh, to great girl. Imagine you chipped his knife doing this. At least you'd be the one to fix it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. It'd be different if I did it. I, uh, very recently, I was stupid enough to chip a, uh, my Fujiwara mm. by cutting a piece of frozen pork. You know how I chipped my Denka? Was I was cutting green onions and I have a Nikiri mm -hmm. and I was cutting and I Swiped. Right, right. You know what day of owning the knife I did it on? When the Fujiwara Day number one. Oh. Day number one. <laughs> well, I had it. First time I used it, I chipped it. So, I'll be using this grater, the uh, Japanese... Um, what's the brand? Tsuboye. Tsuboye. Yeah. So, I'm going to use this a... Uh, sorry. <laughs> I'm like, I you're humor. teaching me. I'm like, oh yeah, it's eh at the end. <laughs> That cat's a big boy. <laughs> so, I'm going to use this, a uh, Japanese traditional grater. Yeah. Uh, made by the company called Tsuboye. Great thing about this is that the, it is not done by hand like some of the uh, traditional graters are made. Mm -hmm. Some are actually made by like each one's hand hammered. Yeah, of course. But this is really nice. It's pretty sharp. So it when you're actually yes. grating it, yeah, it cuts it very nicely. Okay. It you don't like s squish. Yeah. Like it really with the minimal force, it just grates it so good. Oh wow! And it makes a very nice paste. I love this stuff. Just careful not to grate your fingers. Mm -hmm. You can absolutely use this substitute to the microplane. And stuff yeah. Like yeah. That too, right? And what else would you use on this thing? Like, cause, like, you know, ginger. Yeah, I use ginger. Uh, if you have a small kid, um, likes to um, eat apples. Oh, okay. You can grate apple. I have one small kid who won't eat anything. Or you, yeah, you can grate anything into small paste that you know it hides into the food that you're mm. cooking too, right? Meatball. That's a good move. Yeah. Oh, meatballs are good for sneaking like, food into your kids. Yeah, hiding, uh, hiding anything. I often grate the um, um, onion. Okay. And it's great to marinate any uh, protein as well because onion has this enzyme, right? Yeah. Breaks to break it down. down a bit. Yeah. I had the other day. We were 
I was with Kevin, mm -hmm. and we were he was putting lunch together, and he meant to do um, cantaloupe wrapped in ham, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but the cantaloupe wasn't very ripe. But he had a papaya, and it was really oh, yeah, good. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It was like because that's a like a really classic mm -hmm, thing, mm -hmm. right? Cantaloupe and, cantaloupe, and prosciutto. Yeah, yeah. Same thing as the uh, okay. the akitori thing. Um, and sp splash of the uh, apple cider vinegar. Too. Sure. Yeah. Oh, no, no, I, there, oh, okay. I, I thought you were gonna no, splash no. from there. No, 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 no. And, I want to uh, see what it tastes like. Brown sugar. Nathan comes back and drank all of his cider. Does it have? Is it? Is it actually boozy? Well, we'll find out. <laughs> and uh, soy sauce. Yeah, it is. He's pretty good at that. Yeah, that tastes really good. Sesame oil. Maybe Nauto needs a cider. <laughs> Sesame oil. And the cat is looking at this. Get out of here. Uh, Look at this monster. Uh, ow, I know. I know. So, sesame oil. I just give the quick whisk, whisk to it. Mm -hmm. And, uh. Oh, it's actually pretty good. So, this is the uh, good marinade. For um, beef here. Here, let me get that out of there. Let me do something to help. I know he's got like a compost bucket or something. Japanese started eating peppers like back when, a while ago. <laughs> they, before, Japanese- Before beef. Before beef. Okay. Japanese never really liked that the uh, spicy, spicy peppers. So these peppers are not that spicy, except when it's spi super spicy. It's like- Yeah, there's like, Every now and again, you get a really stupid hot one. Yeah, yeah. And to prepare it, it's pretty straightforward. Um, when you, like you are usually grilling by self like this. I usually cut off the top and I, I pull out a few holes so that it doesn't explode. And that's, the, that's how I prepare these. What are the odds, eh? I got the hot one. Oh, you did? <laughs> <laughs> I do that for you. And we can skewer this later. And oh, that part makes I that makes sense. Poking holes in it. Yeah, it doesn't ex explode, right? What don't you know how to do? You want me to put skewer these on skewers? Do you want me to do anything? Sure, you can skewer those. All right. Let's move on to putting the meat up and marinate, getting the marinade started. All right. Okay, so again, we've got the nice, beautiful marbled short ribs here. Um, what I'm going to do is that these are called like Korean um, LA Kalbi yeah. uh, cut. It's the slice instead of like chop. They have usually three ribs, rib bones together. Um, let's make it a really simple. I usually cut in between here. Yeah. To make, make it like these pieces. Are, these gonna, are they going to go on skewers later? No, these are going to actually okay. grill on top of the, uh, um, just the grill. Um, Whoa. Whoa. Be careful. Get a good marinade. Um, I usually marinate overnight. Um, we got a nice chicken thigh pieces, cut in small pieces and skewer them for the ground. Yeah, when you do, like, when you go to like a fancy yakitori place, though, like, they're very specific, right? Like, mm -hmm. certain muscles and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, uh, especially, like, not so much thigh, but, what, like, the, one of the most popular... Here's a little bit of a quiz. A oh, quiz? Th thigh is like, it's like, you know... Thigh is really popular, uh, pieces of, um, pieces of chicken for yakitori. Mm -hmm. What do you think the next piece or the uh, what muscle would be the popular next to the uh, thigh? next to the thigh? Yeah, it is dark. Okay. Just just to give you that. Well, it's probably gonna be. Well, it's probably the. I'm gonna guess it's the oyster off the back. Mm. That would be like. 
It is hard to get, and there are only two oysters mm -hmm. for um, per chicken. For yeah. chicken. But uh, no, what is it then? Neck. The neck. And believe it or not, yeah, neck is really popular piece of um, skewers in Japan. Meat. I usually cut into like. Little like inch size pieces here. Yeah. yeah. And don't don't worry about marinating these. We can actually um, put the tare or the uh, we basically um, we basically season them as we grill. What do you got there? I think this is. I know what it is. <laughs> I was there. It's a chicken heart. Chicken hearts. Probably 50 chickens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, chicken hearts are great. The, uh, they are a little bit more tougher muscle. Mm -hmm. like it's the, it like moves like pretty much it, like all the time, right? Yes. So it's a little bit more tougher, but it, because it's small, um, tender meats usually are the part that doesn't move. Yeah, they don't move around, right? Yeah. But the, uh, this uh, moves all the, all the time, mm -hmm. but because it's small, um, and I usually uh, slice them a little bit thinner, even if you grill it, it doesn't get really, really tough. Yeah. Like the other, like shoulder, it gets really tough, right? Yeah. Uh, it won't do that. It gets nice kind of crunch uh, flavor to it. Um, be careful. If you go to the, some restaurants here in Canada, I've seen that the skewers, they just skewer like this. It's not wrong. It's not But it's wrong. not as good as it could be. No, because what happens is that the... Uh, what I usually do is actually slice them open this way so that you see some of the, uh, those what we call the rooms. Okay. The, um, sometimes when you actually cut it open, you see a tiny bit of blood. Mm. Left in at the, uh, so you gotta give it like a little rinse maybe? Yeah. So I usually open it up and I skewer them this way. Okay, so I'm with you. This way. I think if you don't like blood, Maybe you shouldn't eat a heart. <laughs> the heart is a still muscle though. Yeah, but if I think if you got an issue with the, you know, like I'm just, you know, saving someone some trouble right. somewhere. If you don't like blood, I you don't want to eat liver. Cook no. Liver, so. you can just a handful of hearts. Uh, we used to, so I used to serve duck hearts at the restaurant I owned. Mm. And we would do something very similar, you know, you trim off the top. I would brine them mm, for yeah, about 45 yeah, yeah. minutes. Same idea as what you said with the milk, right? Mm. And, um, but I had always pictured this like little guy, this like little duck with like the big headdress and everything on and just like, you know, like quacking, like taking the hearts out. And then <laughs> that's how you got them all. Yeah. Yeah, I've been like- A this, little duck priest. Yeah, like a little, you know, and there's like a little like short round duck trying to get away. And, <laughs> like the whole movie just got turned into ducks in my head. Mm. Places your brain goes when you're working in the kitchen. I, I don't have it together at all. Like this is, my brain does this all day. What are you doing? Like get out of here. Nathan said this is the mean one. Oh yeah? Yeah, she'll get you. Ah, <laughs> uh, scooped. You actually had something to show people. And as, you know, I I've, I've got some stuff. I there's some chicken wings, but we're not going to skewer those. We're just I found digging around, I found some stuff. Mm -hmm. Have you had any of that yet? No, I haven't. I haven't tried it yet. There's this restaurant in Ottawa called Corner Peach, and they do a lot of takeaway stuff like since the pandemic settled in. And uh, this stuff's amazing. The chili oil. Eh? The chili oil, yeah, they call it chili crunch. It's got all kinds of stuff in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we got some corn on the cob, some hot dogs, and there's some ground beef somewhere. So, oh, it's terrifying with everyone watching you <laughs> break your friend's things, you know? But that's why they put the heel on them. I did this one time, like when I was teaching at the college, I didn't know. It was just like a seafood stew I had to make. 
and they gave me like a bunch of lobsters. And the only knife I had was I had my, my Haruki Kuma, <laughs> but I had to clean lobsters. And I was like, well, here it goes. I didn't chip it though. Yeah, I have no idea what's in here, but it tastes really good. So. Oil. There's oil. Oil? Yeah. Some nuts. There's I a think. soybean there. Yep. That'll be good. Add two. Let's do two. And then I found this. Nathan's always got mixed up things around here. Yeah, see? Yeah, who knows what it is? I didn't, I should chili, taste it first. Chili pepper. Salt in it. That's what I was hoping for. Yeah. Salt, some chili flakes, maybe granulated garlic yeah. and uh... Yeah. yeah. So we'll just let that hang out. That's nothing crazy, but you don't want to put too, too much on chicken wings when you put them on the charcoal because they get, uh, they flare up a fair bit, yeah, yeah. you know, so. I don't know. What was Kevin doing? Just like this, just like little like, like baby. Cuts, yeah. Mm. yeah. This isn't fun. This is like when you watch like, I right now I'm the guy who's trying to make like, like I saw something on TikTok and I'm trying to do it now, but I suck at it. Yeah, I think I might have only, there's gonna be one that's like half done. Yeah. Oh, you know, that's what I do yeah. at home. Like when I like cook a hot dog, I'll go with one of those. And then you stick it in the frying pan. Butterfly yep. hot dogs. <laughs> Put a chef press on top of that in your cast iron pan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boom, boom. That's a good move. So that was a lot of fun. Or oh, you can like cut it into small pieces and skewer them, but. Is that what you wanted? <laughs> yeah, no. Is that, is that the shot you wanted? They bought like a tube of ground beef. You see like what I mean though, about them like just making fun of me all the time. Like you got all this nice stuff to do. And I got hot dogs and well, I didn't even have to peel the corn. <laughs> so maybe here, we'll make little like hamburger skewers. Let's try not to break the knife though. As long as it cuts like that, it should be fine. But here, we'll do this. We'll put two on a skewer now, Toe. It'll be like your shiitake mushrooms. We'll here. put like little mini burger. Salt and pepper. Because I'm seasoned brown. That's Lordy's recipe. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> See? I'm a fucking joke to them. This is not going to work, by the way. In the end, these are going to fall apart. <laughs> Just guaranteed. Sure. Guaranteed oh, mess. Like, this is mine. This is mine. And that's yours. Like, you understand, <laughs> right? Like, you're with me that this is a, this is a problem. <laughs>
with the charcoal, but you can do a few layers if you want. Again, if you st are starting Binchotan, you can do kind of alternating layers, almost like lasagna of, of Ogatan and Binchotan. But we're gonna make sure that the hole is facing up and down so that the flame can actually travel through it properly. All right, so we've got our chimney nicely loaded with charcoal. We're gonna throw a bit of paper underneath, get it lit, and uh, then we'll have charcoal ready to go. My secret technique, but I think it's worth mentioning. Not a secret anymore. No, it's okay. Oh, this knife is sharp. <laughs> okay, now there's a few ways to use a charcoal chimney. If you wanna do the quick and easy way, you can just throw it right over a gas burner uh, and that'll light quite quickly, but you don't wanna do it inside because it produces a lot of carbon monoxide. I'm gonna use a little bit of paper, just any old newspaper flyers or the brown paper from your latest knife wear order will do. Stuff that up in there. And because Ogaton's a bit denser, and it lights a little more slowly than lump charcoal. One trick that I like, if you got it, is to just throw some odd pieces of kindling in there. Paper lights really easily, but it burns quickly. We need a bit more of a sustained flame to light a uh, denser charcoal like this. Like I said, a gas flame, or you can load it with paper a few times. But I find having some nice dry bits of wood that light easily and burn for longer than paper Help is kind of a, a mid-stage between the paper and the charcoal. All right, let's light her up. We've got our KISS lighter naturally. And just light it in a few spots. Once it gets going, you don't want to be holding it up in the air like this. So we're just trying to get it lit. And then we're gonna bring it back down to our grill to kind of let it do its thing. This Ogaton charcoal is great for cooking yakitori or really any traditional grilled Japanese dish that you would use binchotan for. Uh, but it's also great for grilling any kind of meat, vegetables, heck, grill pineapple on it if you want to. Uh, it just brings a really lovely smoky flavor, a nice intensity to heat, uh, and just makes your cooking more fun. Okay, so we burned through that wood. Uh, we've got a nice kind of sustained flame starting at the bottom of the charcoal. Like I said, having a bit of kindling in there helps to sustain that fire a little longer because the dense charcoal does take a little bit of time to get lit. But you can also just start with paper flame get that charcoal going, and then it'll continue to light itself from the bottom up. This is when you could, if you wanted to, grab a hair dryer or a shop vac, force a bunch of air in there, get it going really quick. For me, cooking with charcoal is a little more about sitting back and enjoying the process. So at this point, I'll probably crack myself a beer, sit and just let the charcoal go, and in 20 minutes or half an hour, when the whole thing is lit and, and going, and you can see it's changes color and it starts smoking. We're ready to start cooking and, uh, and you can get to grilling. So again, you can find the Ogaton charcoal at knifeware.com or in knifeware stores. We'll ship it anywhere in Canada. And you can find the charcoal chimneys also at knifeware.com or in your local knifeware store. Happy grilling, folks. Well, Lordy, it looks like we're cheating here. This is a bit of a quick and dirty way of doing it, but if you've already got a beautiful fire lit, why not use it? Yeah, well, it's yeah. not cheating if it works, right? Mm. Yeah, I guess. So, We've got a couple of different types of charcoal around. Uh, what we have in here, I'm just gonna reach in and grab it because I'm obviously very brave. This is the Ogatan charcoal. It's a Vietnamese style charcoal oh, wow. made out of um, out of fruit wood. So the kind of the, I guess it's a hexagon. The, it's got the little hole in it. Don't know if the camera can grab that, but what it does is it makes it really easy to light and you can stack it nicely in the grill. So it kind of gives you a little, Kind of extra control over your fire. Cool. Mm -hmm. Smells amazing. Uh, it's really uh, okay, I'm gonna go. spruced up our fire. Because we wanted to try some of the uh, traditional Japanese chocolates as well, we do have this uh, uh, chocolate called Binchotan. Uh, Binchotan is quite a bit different from the uh, those Ogatan chocolates because yeah. Ogatans are made from the sawdust, right? Yeah. Mm. Well, the Binchotan is the uh, made out of the uh, a piece of, you know, piece of the oak yeah and they made it so dense that takes well it takes longer to light but once it's going it goes so long and it's almost like almost perfectly smokeless it does well, flameless uh charcoal oh wow so it cooks very nice and evenly and also like it doesn't flame up as much as the other charcoals so it's so different so we actually made the uh, comparison video Roll it, Nathan. Hi, welcome back. 
It's a beautiful June day. The mosquitoes have yet to come out. The sun is shining, a gentle breeze. And I wonder what would make today a better day? Clearly, grilling over charcoal. Imagine yourself in the backyard in your easy chair, fuzzy, sparkly, cold, drink in hand, ready to be refreshed. And after a couple of those refreshments, you're getting a little peckish. Do you know what is the best thing when you've had a couple beer and you're ready to eat? Meat on sticks. And there is no better way to eat meat on sticks than the Japanese way of grilling over vincho tan on your Conroe grill. Now there's a lot of different types of charcoal. We have a few here. We're gonna go through the differences for you. Our favorite kind of charcoal is easily bincho tan. It's made in Japan. It undergoes a dehydration process that's almost a week long. And then they finally bring it up to about a thousand degrees, resulting in a piece of charcoal that's somewhere around 97% carbon. It's very hard and it burns at a very good temperature. It burns at over 700 degrees Celsius and will burn for several hours, five, six, sometimes eight hours. It comes in different sizes. This is about the smallest size you can get. In fact, you can even get whole logs of, of trees that have been turned into charcoal. There's this good old lump charcoal, big bag of it costs you about 15 bucks. You'll burn through a whole bag easily in one go and uh, it'll get the job done. You get a bit more of the taste of the charcoal, a bit more of that burnt taste, but um, it's really a great way to get the flavor and the heat cooked. It's a great way to get the flavor and the heat of the charcoal that you want. A little bit easier to use, a little bit more controlled, a little easier to light as the standard charcoal briquette. Really, it does what you want it to, but uh, you burn through them really fast. I don't know, I think you can get better results, but if you want just something really simple, that's a way to go. Something that we really like that's a, a good sort of in-between is this Ogatan charcoal, where they're actually using trimmed bits of waste wood uh, to turn into charcoal. So they're kind of upcycling wasted wood from whatever use it was originally intended for and turning it into charcoal. It follows a few steps that are similar to the bincho tan. They dehydrate it and they get it up to a nice high temperature and then extinguish it, uh, leaving behind as much carbon as possible. Now when you're burning charcoal or bincho tan especially, you get a really deep heat. One thing I find that's amazing about it is you cook stuff on it and even if you look at it and you think it's burnt, it even it still tastes good. It doesn't have that gross acrid taste to it. It's really quite delicious. It's a really unique way to cook and it delivers just absolutely delicious, crispy, tasty food. Now we have a video here you can watch about how to light charcoal. Using a charcoal chimney is a great way if you've got a small portable gas burner or one on the side of your barbecue, for example, really great way to get the charcoal going. Using a chimney really gets you a nice even uh, gets the charcoal burning really evenly before you dump it into your your Conroe or whatever kind of barbecue you've got. Some are a little bit harder light. You know, the Vincho Tan does take a little bit more effort to get going because of how dense it is. Once it's going, it burns for an incredibly long time. Uh, you know, I think we're gonna do a little test here. We've got our handy dander, handy dander? We've got a handy dandy laser thermometer here. And, and I think We'll probably see the uh, lump charcoal and the briquettes similar temperature. Think the briquettes because you're gonna be able to pack more of them into the same space. I think we're gonna get a better heat or a more dense heat off of this guy than the, the good old lump charcoal. Following that, I suspect because of the process the Ogatan charcoal goes through, we're gonna see a, a really good temperature. I like their regular shape so you can stack them and uh, you can spread their, them out really easily to control your temperature. But finally, I really do think that we're gonna see about the highest temperature off of the Bincho 10. So we've got uh, our thermometer, we've got a bunch of different charcoal going, we're gonna lay them out in here, and we're gonna test and see which ones burn the hottest. And we're gonna give you some real numbers, some real information at the end of this video. All right, sometime later, here in June, and uh, we've got a couple different kinds of charcoal ripping. We got them going in that charcoal chimney, got them good and hot, and now we've let them sit in here for about 10 minutes so they can kind of even out. We've got lump charcoal, we've got the Ogatan, and we've got Bincho Tan. And so uh, let's take the temperatures and see where we're at. You know, when I put my hand over it, they, it it's, it, I mean, it's hot. The, the lump charcoal actually feels the hottest. Oof, the Ogatan, the Ogatan is the hottest. Okay, lump charcoal, let's see if I'm doing this right. All right, our lump charcoal is coming in at 580 degrees Celsius. Ogatan, we're coming in at 
670 degrees Celsius. And the Binchotan, oh, we're going over 670, we're at 675, it's getting up to 700. Wow, that bounced around a little bit, but close to 700 degrees Celsius on the Binchotan. And, and it's crazy, it's a really dense feeling heat. This, it's, it's very interesting. So we can open our little vents if we wanna get some more air flowing through to get it uh, even hotter. There you go, Binchotan's the hottest. Lump charcoal is great, it's cheap, it's pretty easy to light. You burn through a ton of it really quickly and you know, it's not the best, but it's uneven, sometimes uneven temperature, but it, it's cheap and easy. I like the Ogatan because it's equal size pieces. It gets nice and hot. It burns really evenly and consistent and the price is great. The Binchotan, it burns for a super long time. It takes a little while to get it going, but once it's hot and cooking, you can cook on it for hours. It's really, really awesome. It's a lot cleaner taste too. You don't get as much of that soot kind of taste on the, on the meat. Sometimes you can get your Binchotan going, you can get your Conroe heated up and everything hot by starting it with some lump charcoal, helps to sort of balance out the price and it, and it works really well. One of the things that's great about charcoal and especially about the Binchotan, because of its high amount of carbon, is that it's got infrared heat and that infrared actually goes through the meat or the food you're cooking much better than say something like gas. It's gonna get your meat cooked really nicely, really evenly, it gets a really crisp sort of outside to, the, to the, the food you're cooking. It actually helps it to retain a bunch of moisture, so it's a lot more uh, delicious when you're gonna eat it, because who wants super dry jerky? One of the greatest things about the Binchotan and the process they go through and the way they make it really, is that it's emitting a far infrared heat. It's like a light and it really penetrates the food, getting you really, really nice and evenly cooked food. It's actually quite fantastic. The difference that you see in, in the food is noticeable, uh, and it's really quite special, to be honest. And yeah, so we're gonna get some sticks of uh, some stuff out here, and we're gonna get cooking. It's really nice outside you know it's dinner time why don't you cook some stuff we we actually snuck into the uh, nathan's kitchen and prepare some food nathan always has good food this is a great idea what this, do you got this is the best birthday i've ever had <laughs> <laughs> yeah me too yeah. cheers brent let's get the get, let's get cooking happy birthday guys happy birthday, happy birthday. Uh, thanks nato <laughs> <laughs> just spilled beer everywhere well, let's get these some food cooking, eh? What do you got? Yeah, don't give me that tray. I'm embarrassed of it, remember? Lordy's <laughs> Gourmet cooking. Tray. Well, so we got some yakitoris. Oh. It's... Just got no, after. Oh. You do it after. You ever do this before? No. Holy shit, bud. Been selling these fucking grills I could drink for four this. Years. This smells amazing, <laughs> you guys. Woo! I'm just gonna see that game mushroom. I'm gonna die right now. <laughs> we have Lordy's not frozen. used to an Alberta birthday. You frozen. need a fucking. There you go. Oh. Shishito peppers. <laughs> we really have to sit here and go go. Here. I can give you a fucking hot dogs in here. Here. Can, I'm on a work trip. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't eat something really fast, let's cook the. <laughs> Ted, reach us a uh, that little bowl oh, yeah. of uh, beef. This, this guy here. Yeah, that one could. Smell. What do we got in here? That looks beautiful. They are some, some marinated uh, the short rib. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, there you, you go, Lordy. Have I a weenie. <laughs> I just don't understand. I've been to where you're from. Now. <laughs> 
and it's not like this at all. <laughs> and you're so happy. <laughs> I've never been to oh, where Nato's from, I don't think. Oh. I've been to Japan a couple times. Have I ever told you the story about when I was camping in Japan? I got invited to a barbecue just like this, only it was way okay. warmer. <laughs> yeah. Was it December? It's in Okinawa. It was in Okinawa. Yeah. And like, my Japanese is horrible. And, well, I mean, I just don't practice very much because I'm embarrassed. But like, I know almost no Japanese and the people I was like camping with knew new English. Like, we met at the campground, but it was off-season, and th so they thought we were lost and, like, homeless. Mm. <laughs> and so we got invited to this great barbecue where, because we couldn't really communicate with each other, we just said the names of Disney princesses all night long. Or cities. That's freaking fire <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's the summer. <laughs> you need it. Lordy, have you ever heard Amsterdam in Japanese? No. That's fun. Amsterdamu. Amsterdamu. Sparks hit me in the face. <laughs> you have the shittiest hot dog of my life. <laughs> you gotta let the fire burn down so it's a nice coal no, bed. No, we gotta get this shit eaten <laughs> so we can go home. <laughs> You know what smells amazing though? This uh This beef. Oh yeah. Whoa! Food? Well I just well, like you, you did Tiff get one? Let Tiff have one. It's our oh, yeah. I, yeah. It's your birthday just too, keep Lordy. It these first. Alright, here we go. Oh I like the hot. use of the hot dog there. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Look, this actually turned out pretty good for a hot dog. Look at that. Like it's like it's pretty like it's like some seven mm. eleven shit. But like the good seven, like your seven. Letters. You guys, this is the best thing I've ever eaten. <laughs> you want to play? No. You think we'll get danger pay for doing this? Uh huh. Talk to HR about it. Fun HR's fact: you. Lordy's the head of HR. <laughs> Don't tell people that. Oh. Chris Ward, head of HR. Anytime I tell anybody that. Anybody I tell someone that I used to work with that I'm in charge of HR, <laughs> the room explodes in laughter. Mm. Oh, you know what this party needs, friends? What? Uh, you got a red solo cup? You're going to put your phone in it? We're going to listen to music? No. I think Nathan has a thing. I do. Uh, but we don't need that. In what we June, need is chicken so wings in June. Chicken wings are June chicken wings. Yep, June uh, chicken wings, no, friend. Stay so professional. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard Nauto swear once in the seven years I've known him. I dropped a giant f bomb earlier. Here, Lordy. Have you hung out with me at all? Uh, yeah, I think that's why I did it. Have one. I have a dirty paw. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm like someone's granny. Oh. <laughs> oh. So good. Barely alive. <laughs> like. I don't even know why you invited me. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I got these burger little time. shitty burgers. <laughs> I was doing, all, I was like talking all that shit about them, and I've already eaten two hot dogs. <laughs> wow, it turned out good, eh? Not so embarrassing now, are they? <laughs> I think about four thousand times better than I thought it was good. Mm. All right, but I'll joke. I'll joke it aside. It's probably because of the charcoal. That was great. Yeah, the charcoal. Is ground beef, charcoal right? is pretty awesome for like adding oh, flavor. Man. Like that's gonna be yeah. money. And it cut like it cooks really nice and even. Yeah, From yeah, inside yeah. too, right? You guys, I'm so thankful that I got to spend my birthday with you. It's like. So nice. Which is June 15th, our birthday. Yeah, our birthday is June 15th. Which is today now. Like, at <laughs> what point can we say that it's fucking birthday? <laughs> like, we gotta fake it the whole time. We gotta, to go, we gotta have to go through it. It's like, <laughs> we have to stick with it. <laughs> we have to stick with it. <laughs> Summer. <laughs> 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 Technically, our birthday is late spring, <laughs> before the solstice. Oh my god. 
Well, at least we had a great barbecue. <laughs> yeah. 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 And don't forget about the... Uh, don't forget to ring that bell. Whatever yeah, the hell that means. The three of us are going to be fucking dead. <laughs> and everyone else is liking and subscribing. <laughs> There's a giveaway of Akotan Koro. Leave the comment below what you thought about this episode. As well as what you like to grill on those Akotan Grill. Oh my god, thank hey, god listen, here. Don't forget to wish Lordy a happy birthday. Oh, <laughs> and man. Steph as well. <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs>